Okay. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 45 of the Breakthrough Active Podcast. My name is Jamie, and today I have a very special guest, Georgia Johnson. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good, thanks. And for those that don't know, Georgia is one of our members at Cardiff. Uh, we posted a transformation picture of her on Saturday. She looks amazing. She lost quite a large amount of weight. So today I want to interview her and ask her how she did it. Um, and just advice for other people out there that are struggling with exercise, that want to lose some weight, or simply find some consistency with their training. So Georgia, tell me, how much weight have you actually lost? Um, for me personally, I'm not too sure. I haven't um, checked myself on the scales. I know at my heaviest, I was about 92 kilos. Um, so I would guess that I've probably lost anywhere between 15 to 20. Okay, and why don't you own scales? Why haven't you hopped on the scales? Um, I just, I think from someone who's almost yo-yo dieted before and maybe lost a bit of weight here and lost it there, I knew like the scales wasn't a great representation of um, progress or like sustainable change. And I also didn't want it to be almost unmotivate me from making healthier habits. I know there's been times before where like I've lost I thought I'd lost a lot of weight and then the scale would say that I've gained two kilos and it would be like disheartening to the point where I'd probably stop. Yeah, and we've seen that before where you, you can have the best week of your life, you exercise seven days, you eat all the chicken and broccoli, you drink your water, you go to bed on time and at the end of the week you're so excited to hop on that scale and you just don't see the result you're after. And that can yeah. be for a number of reasons. It can be the amount of water you had the day before, it can be your salt intake, it can be that time of the month for girls where you simply just hold more weight. So the scales, they're, they are a good representation, but they are far from the only representation. There's 10 different things we can judge. Yeah. And when did you stop checking the scales? Was there a moment or a period of time where you thought, I'm just going to eat healthy, exercise, and just let it take care of itself? Well, I think when I saw that 92 kilos, knowing that was my heaviest, I like, yeah, I was really bummed out about that. And I would probably say when we went back after COVID to proper training, and then I did see like a little bit of differences, like in myself, I was like, I'm just not going to check it. Like, I just thought, I'm not going to check it. Let's like check it in three weeks time. And then three weeks passed. And I was like, I'm not going to check it again. And I just found that you know, I was exercising and making those choices for the right reasons, not to try and get a number lower on a scale. So, so it just have, have you not checked the scale since 92? I checked it. I think I checked it once and I was about, that's when I got to like maybe 78. Okay. And that, yeah. <laughs> you got that weekly reinforcement of, I guess, checking the scales and in your own mind making progress. How did you make progress how did you view your progress was it getting fitter was it getting stronger was it your clothes was it a compliment what kept you going um, really like community was a big one like i love the community at breakthrough and everyone's so supportive people like Di and summer and katie um always kind of pushing you to be there uh clothes was also a big one but probably mentality like i just feel like when I am exercising or making healthier decisions, like I'm more clear in my head. Like I'm just a bit like I'm a happier and a lighter person. So I'm like, why wouldn't I continually choose those things that make me feel better about myself? Absolutely. Um, and exercise yeah. is massive for like, like mental health. And if you're yeah. good, you're drinking water, you're going to bed on time, you're exercising, you're going to feel better. And when you feel yeah. better, you make better decisions. And that's where momentum starts. And once you're running down that hill, just keep going. Okay. You mentioned the community in regards to Di, Katie, and Summer. When you're not feeling motivated, when you have those down days, everyone has those down days. What, what gets you through? Um, I, I guess it's just having those habits. Like it's just having those habits reinforced. And even like, like Sally's also someone that's been a really great help for me. Just being able to text someone saying like, I might not make it to the gym today. I'm feeling a bit sad. Um, it's just been good because then they're like, that's okay. Have the day off, but you'll be back tomorrow. Or that they do know in the next workout just to, you know, just to give that, offer that extra bit of encouragement or make sure that you're eating right. 
I mean, diet's been pretty good because she's started like a little Facebook group of just like collective, is everybody eating okay? Just like things with that, it's almost keeping you accountable. Yep. Um, yeah. And quite often we do more for others than for ourselves. And if we had that community at the gym and you feel like you're letting down die or sell or not, I guess, listening to their advice and what they say, then it, it, it is great for accountability. Yeah. I find, yeah. That, I find that even having Mitch by my side, like we keep each other on track. And if I was to slip for a few days or a week or a month, he's going to say something. And I think that's really yeah. important to have people around you that can be honest. Honestly, like, I feel like it's the same for everyone. People just thrive in community. Yeah. Like you can, there are people like special people out there that may be able to do like these sort of journeys alone and quietly and stuff like that. But yeah, I, I think most of us like human nature is just like community is better for everybody. Like just yeah. doing it together. And, and I think everyone just needs help. Everyone needs a coach from Tiger Woods yeah. having a coach to LeBron James from having a coach to Serena Williams having a coach. Like these are the greatest athletes at the top of their sport and they still have a coach and have that accountability. Yeah. So whether you're an yeah. absolute beginner or you are top of the field, you have a coach. Like Mr. Uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger had a coach. Chris Bumstead had a coach. Phil Heath had a coach. All the people that you think of when you think of fitness, they have coaches. Yeah. They have like just people to help guide you and keep you on track. Like you could even be on, feel like you're on track and someone's like, oh no, you know, maybe you, I, I don't know, not that coffee's a problem, but maybe you're drinking too much coffee and that's why you're feeling burnout through your exercises at the end of the day or. Yeah. Just, and, yeah. yeah. And surrounding yourself with people that just ask the right questions. Yeah, absolutely. And the other thing too that we, we talk about often is like your, your friend circle, that group of people you hang around, they have a massive influence over your actions. And if you hang around with four healthy people, you're going to be the fifth one. Yeah. <laughs> like it, it's as simple as that. And if you hang around four smokers, you're probably going to start smoking. Yeah. Right? I, I think as it's you, like, there's like that quote and it's just like, show me your friends and I'll show you your future kind of thing. Yeah. It's a, it's a Will Smith quote. Like who, who are the last five people that you've messaged? And, and that, yeah. that's the reflection of your life. And I really believe that. Yeah. No, yeah, same. Cool. So what is the biggest thing you've changed about your nutrition? Because it's no secret that with, with any weight loss or any fat loss, nutrition is a huge component. So let's wind back to pre-Georgia, 92 kilo Georgia. What was she doing? Yeah. And what has Georgia been doing the last six, nine, 12 months? So... Um... I think the big thing for me was transitioning into a vegan diet. Um, but then it's not just that. I think there was also like little choices up until that transition, which was like um, just making like little habits that like when you're at the supermarket, you're not going to go through the lolly aisle because you know, the, like the, there's just one aisle that's just pure sugar. It's just like, just don't go to that aisle. Either Cadbury or Nestle are on sale. One yeah. Job, one job somewhere. <laughs> yeah. So it's just like, just, just go to the self-service checkout and what's in your trolley when you like unloading it, like that's the stuff you're getting. Like, don't just go and grab other things or even like, if you're going out for dinner, don't grab like that Coke or that diet Coke or whatever. Don't grab that sugar drink, like grab a water or yeah. look at the healthier options. It was like little, it was tiny little things like that. Also, like I work in hospitality, so I would like at the end of a shift could be like at 11 o'clock, I would be like, oh, it's just easy to go through Macca's drive through okay, see drive through It takes two minutes, but also it's kind of like it takes two minutes to heat up a muscle meal as well. Like Exactly. Like it, there's just like things you can, just like if you just looked at your day and you went, okay, that's unhealthy, that's unhealthy, I could make something here so I'm not making an unhealthy choice. You can kind of just like, I don't know, almost like shift it out and make those healthy choices or see where your main issues were. Like my main issues were lack of preparation and like sugar. Yeah, and it's self-awareness in regards to just understanding your day and what you need to get through your day. And, and one of those things that you need to be aware of is what are your triggers? Yeah. If your trigger is the chocolate aisle, 
don't go on the chocolate aisle. For me, yeah. my trigger is cereal. I'm a child. I absolutely love it. And if I have a box of Nutrigrain in my house, I can eat the whole box. Yeah. So that is dangerous <laughs> for me. So it's removed from my house. And it's the same yeah. thing as being aware of what you need to do to be on track with your goals. And you said something I like too about you can go out to a restaurant and you can make that better choice. You can go to McDonald's and not get the double quarter pounder, right? Yeah. We try and, I guess most people think chicken and broccoli or absolute blowout. And there's 50 things in between that that you can choose that are going to be better. And I think yeah. your yo-yo dieting in the past, you're always looking for that perfect diet. And then the second yeah. stray from that perfect diet or perfect meal plan, you blow out when yeah. there is such a good in between between the perfect diet and the worst diet ever just to make good choices along the way. And like, even like back to that yo-yo dieting, like, so I've pretty much tried everything and there's principles and stuff that I guess I've learned from that. And I've been able to bring into like this season of my life, but like, it hasn't always like the actual diet itself isn't sustainable. Like it's sustainable for like the 12 week challenge that they offer. Yep. But then it's like, after that, it doesn't take into account that, you know, you have a social life or that you miss eating a certain food group or like you just want to enjoy yourself or you don't want to have to, you just want to be able to be creative in what you eat. Right? Yeah. Well, a good example is I, I've, Come back from holidays. I'm feeling yeah. not great. I had lots of food as we do on holidays. And this week I was supposed to be on track and perfect. I've got a good mate coming to Newcastle tonight and I'm having dinner with him. If I was on a restrictive diet, I'd be stressing out about that dinner. Right? Yeah. Today I'm going to walk a little bit more. I'm going to exercise. I might reduce my food throughout the day. And I'm going to really enjoy that meal tonight. And more importantly, I'm going to enjoy the relationship with that person. And yeah. That's the worst thing about restrictive dieting, if it is giving you stress around events with friends, birthdays, weddings, whatever the case may be, it's an awful meal plan and you are not going to stick to it. Yeah. And I am, um, you know, before like training with you guys, like I've trained at other places before. And I remember this one girl, we all went out for dinner once and she brought like her little container full of, you know, chicken, broccoli, a bit of rice. And she ate that there. And I'm like, where at money penny? Like, yeah. have like a, a cocktail and like a nice nice food kind of thing like i understand people want to be he as healthy as possible and restrict it but it's just like you've got to at some point learn how to enjoy your life yeah. and I, 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 account what, for these things good. yeah um, if that girl was pre prepping for a bikini show and she was getting on stage yeah. today maybe that's warranted but if she that's what really bothers me we have people that or 100 kilos plus 120, 130, 140, and they just go all in. And all of a sudden, they take their Tupperware of chicken and broccoli when they go to a barbecue, when it's not that meal. It's what have you done the previous seven days? Yeah, exactly. It's like, um, it's isn't there that, that saying, and it's like one bad meal is not going to ruin a diet? Yeah. And like one healthy meal isn't going to, yeah. And what bothers me, and it grinds my gears is we'll have members come to us hey jamie i had dinner last night and i got salad i'm like okay what do you have monday lunchtime oh i got mcdonald's I, yeah I don't care what you eat when you're with your friends enjoy the time with your friends but i do care on the way to work on monday if you're not prepared and you get the muffin from 7-eleven for 700 calories yeah absolutely i think that was probably another unhealthy habit of mine like going and it's something that I, I probably still haven't got 100% down yet. I know I did it the other day. I just got like something from menu log, but maybe save like, you know, that grilled meal or those meals when you're actually out socializing. Yeah. And then when you're at home go like, oh, okay. Yeah. I am going to have like my rice and lentils and veg or whatever's there. I mean, and just know that it's not going to, you're not going to have it a hundred percent from week one. Like, no. like I've been, like we've like that weight has been like the last nine to 10 months. Like I still have habits that I go back to um, that I'm trying to overcome still. And that's still 10, like that's still from 10 months difference. Yeah. In a way. And, and I've seen you drunk many times since in those last nine months. So it is possible yeah. to lose weight and still have a great time. It, it really isn't 
your Saturday night. It really is your Monday up until Saturday 5 p.m. Yeah. Obviously, like, can you blow out a diet on one night? Absolutely, if, if you go for it. But for the majority of people, if you do the right thing throughout the week, you should be enjoying yourself on the weekend, whether that is alcohol with friends or a barbecue with your family. Yeah. Okay. So I think what that all circles back to in self-awareness, to so understand what your trigger foods are and just being yeah. prepared, whether that is meal prep or being prepared and aware enough, hey, my friend Katie, mum Rose is having her 50th party this year. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be there drinking and eating. I probably should be really, really good this week. So just, but just, yeah. Okay. Let's talk about some bad gym experiences. Have you, <laughs> don't name the gym, but have you been, yeah. we, we often hear when people come and join us, they'll have three or four bad experiences and they're already, I guess, hesitant to step for, foot into our door. So let's talk about one of them an experience where you went to a gym, you might not have felt that comfortable. The trainer didn't know your name, all that type of stuff. Tell me yeah. a story. Um, so I, I've been to like a lot of like, I've probably been to about half a dozen like group fitness types of gyms and there's like two or three that I'm like, don't have a problem with. I mean, I think that they were good and whatever. It just, did, just didn't work out for whatever reason. But the, the highlight, I think not the highlight, the one that takes the cake was a gym that I went to probably before breakthrough where it was just this person who didn't really seem too educated in like everyone. Like it it was a very sort of narrow sort of niche type of um, fitness that she, they did that um, benefited them, but probably didn't benefit other people kind of thing. And um, I guess like for me at first, I'm like, I mean, you've known me for maybe like two years now. Um, I was probably a bit quiet when I first came. I'm kind of like a bit reserved when people first meet quiet. me. You were a bit quiet. Yeah, I'm like a bit reserved when people first meet me and get to know me. And I think it took a lot of confidence to, for me to let this person know that, you know, when I do wall balls, they hurt my back. Like, it just, I don't know why. I just struggled with them. So when that person, when I had said that to that person, it was kind of like a get over it, move on, just do it kind of thing. So I think like um, having like a trainer not listen to you is like a re- was like a really that was a really hard and bad experience to go through because I would go to those workouts and it wasn't just like oh I did a tough workout my body was hurting it was like my body is hurting because I'm moving my body in ways that you know I can't move like it just gives me pain so yeah and yeah like we found that before working mitch and i worked in a bunch of gyms before starting breakthrough and there was trainers in there and trainer a was 21 years old fully into bodybuilding loved his bicep curls loved his bench press and, and he almost forced that opinion onto others and it was yeah a 25 year old girl who has an, has no experience in fitness wants to feel better about themselves and then he's talking to you about improving your bench press which you just don't care about yeah and it it is challenging when you have certain beliefs and opinions on ways of training that's not the best thing for everyone it's as simple as that yeah it's just like being able to communicate and from like a trainer's point of view if a trainer's able to communicate with their client great but if a client's able to communicate with their trainer i was probably at that gym for maybe 10 to 12 months seeing very little progress not really wanting to go but thinking it was like the best thing for me because i'm like well they're high intensity workouts it's it's group fitness it's what i liked but really i was just i don't know i was just like constantly miserable like that trainer didn't really listen to me and i didn't really want to listen to her and i think that's ultimately why i started to make the shift into looking for other gyms as well because i didn't want to I didn't want to set up like a habit of just being somewhere because I didn't like being, oh, not liking being where I was. Yeah. And it's one of those yeah. things why we always ask every single person, do you have any aches and pains or injuries? Because yeah, actually should feel great after the session. If you ever do a workout and you don't feel good, then you've done too much or you've done something that you shouldn't have. Right? Yeah. And what, if wall balls hurt your back, it might be your lumbar stability. It might be your tight hips. It might be you just hate them. 
it doesn't matter yeah. what, what, what the reason is. Like, if you do not like ball balls, I am not going to make you do ball balls. Because at the end of the day, we're squatting and throwing a ball. If we do a goblet squat with a dumbbell on your chest, it's not much different and you're happier. Yeah. Right? And like, yeah, I think that's another thing that I really like, liked about you guys as well. Like I was really struggling to do lunges at one point because I had a bit of a bad ankle. So it was like, it was more like, um, I think it would have been you, the trainer, the first day I was like, oh, I can't do lunges. And you're like, that's okay, just do this instead. Where I felt like at previous gyms, I was like, oh, I can't do lunges. And it was almost being like interrogated into why you can't do lunges. And yep. you felt awkward and it's just like, fine, I'll just do lunges. But it didn't benefit anyone. Yeah, and this like literally people's bone anatomy, bone structure is going to bias them towards certain exercises. And yeah. It, it, even a lunge where using our quads, our hamstrings, I can think of five other exercises that use those muscles without doing a lunge. Right. Yeah. And that, that, that goes back to that trainer who's biased and they're pushing their own values onto others because they think a lunge is a great exercise. Not for everyone. It's the right exercise for the right person at the right yeah. time. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, I agree. What's your advice for anyone who's wanting to get started? Before I let you answer that question, what we hear more than anything else is, oh, I'm not fit enough to join the gym. I might go walk first for a month and it's cold outside. It's raining. They're probably not going to start that walk. And there is delaying yeah. joining our gym or another gym. What's your advice to them? Um, I always like that. Cause I have a few friends that have said that I've definitely heard that before. Like they want to get fit before they get fit. And it just yeah. sounds kind of sounds really dumb. Yeah. <laughs> um, my advice Get someone that, like, go to the gym with a friend. Like, my mum was a breakthrough. That's who I started breakthrough with. Like, my mum was going. I never met Angela, ever. Mitch yeah. <laughs> I remember her name, um, Yeah, so I went with my mum. And just be accountable to people. But, like, also just start. I think a big one, like, this isn't so much fitness, but when I started becoming a vegan or going into that dieting, I was like, it's not like Alcoholics Anonymous. You don't go back to like day one because you had a bad meal or because you didn't work out. Like it's a, literally a journey that's going to go up and down and like you might skip a day and that's okay. It doesn't mean you're back to day one of your fitness journey. Yeah. Like that's the whole point of a journey is that there's trials along the way. It's like how you overcome it. You just have to start. Like that's yeah. probably like the best of us. Grab a friend and start. <laughs> People are so fearful of that first session and it is so hard for us to communicate that it's going to be okay because they think we're yeah. personal trainers that live and breathe nothing but health and fitness. But every single person can do this because you've done it and we've had many, 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 many others in the exact same situation do it. And we've had, we've had members with one arm before. Like we've, we've, we've yeah. had members in their 70s before. We've had members with every type of injury you can possibly imagine, and they can do it. Obviously, it might be easier for someone who is, has more experience, um, is more, I guess, familiar with what our program's going to be, but everyone can do it regardless of your study level. And if you can't, we'll send you to the place that you can. Yeah. Yeah, I think just like... Day one, if you don't have a friend and you're going to break through day one, 100%, someone's going to come up to you and be like, oh, hey, what's your name? And, yeah. like, I know that because I know I've been to sessions before. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, I don't think we've met. Like, no one at Breakthrough is going to make it difficult for you to want to be there, like, from the get-go. Like, we're all pretty inclusive and... Yeah. And yeah. That, the favorite part about our gyms, and this is just me being biased and opinionated yeah. <laughs> and others, but like the majority of people that started with us, they started with a level of fitness that, let's be honest, wasn't great. Yeah. And, and they, they haven't felt the best. They have felt out of shape. And when they walked into our gym, they had those same nerves, those same feelings of anxiety around getting started. So when they see a new person come in, they see themselves in that person, which is why it's yeah. so they reach out to them and make sure that they're okay. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's kind of like, it doesn't, 
matter if you don't finish the workout in time as well. Like just like little things. I think if you just if you're brave enough to just start, like you'll get to you'll get to where everyone is eventually or where you want to be or you'll notice the change like in 10 months time as well. It's just yeah, it's just understanding that it's okay to be a beginner at something. Yeah, and it's just there's there's no shame in being the, the least fittest in the room. Because yeah. In a month's time when someone else comes, they're gonna be the least fittest in the room. And I think yeah. it's, it's amazing just how far you and others have come in our gym. And I think it's always a great reminder to think back to that first session. Because when you're having those down days, when you don't have motivation, you think, Oh, I'm so out of shape, I'm the worst person in the world. Well, let's think about that first session and how far you've come. And whether it's weight loss or fitness or strength, everyone has made progress. But mentally, there's just so many ways that people have made progress. Yeah. And everyone, again, everyone also has bad days. We've done like a workout twice, like say like the Pasha Volka, that or, or a workout similar where I didn't do good the, like the fourth time we did it. Like I was back to the start. I mean, everyone, it's just a part of life. Like sometimes you're really good at something. Sometimes you worked really hard at something and then, some days you just have a bad day, but you just keep turning up and you keep trying to hit those goals. Yeah, and people are under the impression that everyone feels good all the time. And no. <laughs> speaking of more quotes, it's a Joe Rogan quote. If I exercised on days I felt great, I wouldn't exercise. Yeah, and, yeah, and 100%. It goes, back, it goes back to those habits like when you have poor night's sleep, when you haven't eaten great, when you don't feel 100%, it's those habits to drive to the gym and still go and you will feel better after. Yeah. Yeah, right. that's true. George, let's wrap it up there. I'm so proud of you and everything you've done in the last nine Thank months. Thank you. I was blown away by your picture as was Mitch Brody, Steve and all of our members. So you should be really proud. Thanks. <laughs> Have a good day, everyone. Thanks right. for listening.